In this video we're going to be looking at the details of implementing a stack. So we've already defined a stack as an abstract data type and to briefly summarize our discussion we said that it was a collection of elements and that this abstract data type was defined by its two operations pushing and popping. These are the equivalent of adding and retrieving elements. So this collection of elements, it, op it operates based on the last in first out principle. So whatever you add will, will be pushed downwards. So suppose I added one, then I added two, three, four. Four will be the one at the top of the list, at the top of the stack. And whenever you want to pop an element or retrieve an element, the last one in, last in, will be the first one out. So the four will be the first one coming out, then three, then two, then one. So this is briefly what a stack is. Now we're going to try to implement it in code and see how it works out. Um, there are multiple ways one could implement a stack. Um, the first one would be using a dynamic array. So you would use an array, a normal array, for example in C, and you would store your elements. Suppose you would store them right here in this order. So their first element would be here, second would be here, third would be here, fourth would be here. Whenever you want to, uh, so that's equivalent to pushing elements. And whenever you want to pop an element, you would just go to the end of the list, and wherever there is an element, you would pull it out of here. And this would be popping. And then you would pop this one and that one. Now this works fine, and the only problem we might have is what if we get to the point where we fill out our entire array? So we put an element here, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and then in the end we just filled out the entire array, and then we want to add, we want to push more elements. What do we do? So to solve this problem, we actually use a dynamic array. So we create this illusion whereby we increase the size of the array. So without the user actually sensing it, in our implementation, what we're going to do, whenever we reach the end of a specific array that we define to be of a particular size, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of its elements to a larger array. So we copy them all and then we've effectively created some more space because we now have a larger array and then we start pushing elements into those new spaces and then popping from them. And then whenever we actually reach that stage again where we've filled the entire array then we do the same process again. We copy it all over to a larger array and do that over and over again. And this will be part of our implementation. So there's this way to do it. This is, of course, in terms of efficiency, it's faster. But to implement it, it's a little bit more complicated because you're going to have to copy, do these copies, and detect whenever we got we, we get a, a full array. A, a better way to do it, although slightly less efficient, but a, a lot less complicated in implementation. And this is the one we're going to be fo focusing on in the video. Is using linked lists. So. Uh, we're actually using data structures right now. So here this is using an array, the array data structure, and this is using the linked list data structure. These are data structures that we're using to implement the abstract data type that is the stack. So the abstract data type is of course implementation independent. It just gives you how it operates. It gives you a definition of how it operates based on its operations and the methods that are defined for it. And then it's up to us to actually implement it. And this is what we're doing right now. So using a linked list to um, to implement a stack works this way. You would have, you would define a specific element, and this element would have two things. It would hold the data, this is the data or the elements that you're storing in your collection, and it would also hold another component which is a pointer. And this pointer will point to the next element in the collection. This element will work in the same manner. It will have the data that it's storing in the collection, and a pointer to the next element and so on and so forth until we re reach the end of the list or the end of our stack in this particular case and this one will be pointing to null and it will have a data. So every element, every node in our stack will have a pointer so this is what we add and there's the data that we're trying to store. So this would be an implementation of a stack and then we'd have a pointer here say we call it stack and this would be an, uh, an, an indication of where our stack starts at. So we need to know where the head is at so we can retrieve it. So when we pop an element, we're going to pop this element right here, we're going to retrieve it, and this stack pointer is moved right here. So we're going to look in, a, in the next video how to actually implement it in code, how to implement the stack as a linked list.